Fentelstop area is historically a racist place. Eugene Terreblanche, the leader of the former African party called AWB, used to live here. This is a village that was forcefully removed around 1978. After they were removed, they started meeting, coming with strategies as to how to get this land back. When Mandela was released in 91, he inspired the community to forcefully fight for the land. I remember some of his quotes when he said, poverty is not natural, poverty is man-made. That grandfather was really a visionary. My name is Constance Mohale. I am a fellow of the Atlantic Fellows for Racial Equity. Before COVID, we realized that rural communities are not resilient enough. There are small, small survival strategies that they use are not supported by policy or any program. But when COVID hit, we were exposed as a country that we are not resilient. Our systems are not designed to, to make sure that they respond to disaster in a more effective way, in a, in a way that people themselves can come up with their own solutions and not look far for, for somebody else to be a messiah and, and, and bring food for them. So we applied for a solidarity grant to support and incubate a project like this where beekeeping can be demonstrated as a, another way of making sure that food that is distributed to people is nutritious enough and is accessible at an affordable cost. Is there any in there, Bana? Oh, that's great. So Mwata and the Atang project is a project in the village of Hutrefonden, having about 12 members who are the original conceptualized members, and it is funded by Solidarity Grant, and it's, it's now at the stage of the first harvest. I am a community of the 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 village of the lot of bees here. This is the world of bees because of the blue gum trees, because of the sunflower fields. At first, everybody was doing what they are able to do. But when they were starting to go through training and formalization of the project, we exposed them to other honey-making projects. They went for an exchange trip, and they came out knowing now the clarification of rules. To see project members all, all in it, you know, wanting things to happen and to work out, it is so overwhelming, so overjoying. So for me, if they are happy, then I'm happy. <laughs> it has benefited them a lot. So we see community responsive and they're responding positively. There are some of them who are inviting them to put their boxes in their, in their yards because they realize there's bees in their pit somewhere or in the house. And honey is very essential for nourishing your throat. It's nutritious. It's also a, a supplement for people who are diabetic. So. For, for us, honey is, is critical. The demand for honey is high and suppliers are not meeting the demand. So for us, I think it is the right moment. COVID is an opportunity for, for, for the project and for other beekeepers to, to be suppliers. So you saw how you can make a change with a very small grant. As human beings, we need to respect each other. I can't rely on you to, to take care of me forever. We need to build resilient communities who are able to help one another, who are able to do things with the small pieces of land that they have. My dream is to see rural communities especially, or black communities, being able to be self-sufficient, being able to know when they wake up, what, what are they gonna eat, what is, what is their schedule for the day? I'm motivated by the love of my work, the love of my community, the love of my family, and I only do what needs to be done.